I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. God. We're going to uh, turn to the Gospel of John in chapter 12. Praise God. You know, sometimes when you share the Gospel with people, uh, there's a lot that, that people do not understand. And one of the things that, that many people have a hard time with is wondering why or how uh, the death and resurrection of someone 2,000 years ago can have any kind of uh, relevance to my life today. You know, and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a fair question, I think, that, you know, uh, people have. How can the death of Jesus have an impact in my life today? Uh, and, you know, there, just by way of illustration, there's, uh, there's a, uh, an account of an Idaho farmer who received an envelope with, uh, with some seeds in it. And the envelope had, uh, had you know, like a handful of, of wheat. But what was, what was unique about this wheat and these grains that, that he received is that they were discovered in a, in a bushel basket of, of seed in a tomb in Egypt. And these seeds were 4,000 years old. The tombs that the Egyptians built were airtight. They were, there was, there was, there was no way that these things could rot. They stayed there for 4,000 years. So he took those seeds and he planted them in a, just a small plot of ground and so uh, they, they sprouted, they grew, he reaped a, a harvest. He didn't do anything with them but save them and planted them again. And after a few years, he was able to plant them in acres, in hundreds of acres of land. And these 4,000 year old seeds still had the life that God put in them. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, if, if these grains of wheat could last and be fruitful after 4,000 years, you know, that tells us something that, that God put life in them and God put life in Jesus and he'll put life in everyone who believes in Jesus, even 2,000 years down the road. Amen. 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 And so let's read this scripture in John chapter 12, verse uh, 23 and 24. It says... Jesus answered them saying, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But, it, but if it dies, it produces much grain. Amen. And so when Jesus spoke this, uh, he made this statement. He was thinking about what he was about to do. He said, the time has come, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And what he was talking about was his own death. And so, you know, I think it's kind of interesting that when Jesus talked about his death, he didn't talk about the, uh, you know, the destruction that he was going to endure. He didn't talk about the, the pain that he was going to suffer. What he said was, that he would be glorified. You know, that, that should tell us something, that what he looked forward to was his life counting for something. Amen. You know, he said the hour has come, and the sacrifice was going to be very real. The suffering that he would go through would be very real. But he wasn't just thinking of that. He knew that by going to his death, he would take away the curse of sin. Amen. 
that he would he would uh, take away the curse of sickness and infirmity. He would take away the curse of death. Amen. But his mind was not on the suffering necessarily or the price that he would pay. He was also thinking about the great good that, that his sacrifice would accomplish. Amen. That this was going to do something far beyond the cross and it was going to do something far beyond the grave. Uh, in, in Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse 2, it says this to us. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So remember what he said. He said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen. And that that glory was going to come as his body was planted in the ground. He said, a grain of wheat, unless it is, unless it dies, unless it is planted and, and dies, it remains alone. But if it is planted, it's going to bring forth much fruit. And so when he said the Son of Man is going to be glorified, that's what he meant. Amen. That his life was going to make an impact in the world. Amen. <clears throat> and so he was looking beyond the suffering of the cross. He was looking beyond the, the, the uh, humiliation that he would endure for us. He was looking, on, looking beyond the, the burial in the tomb for three days. And he was, I believe he was even looking beyond resurrection morning. When he would rise from the dead. And I believe what he was looking at. And the joy that was set before him. One would be a reunion with his father in heaven. And two. That many souls would be saved. By that sacrifice. Amen. That many would, would come to Christ. That many who, who had no hope of making it to heaven. Would now be able to make it to heaven. Amen. That there was going to be a multitude of people. If you read the book of Revelation. It says that those who are in heaven that are saved and worshiping God, uh, you know, at the at the throne of God, it says there's a multitude that no man could number. Amen. Millions of people saved because Jesus would go to the cross. Amen. And so I want you to think with me for a moment about the power of the planted seed. Okay, so... You know, the Bible says in, in the parables of Jesus, he, he talks about the seed of, of the word of God being planted. Amen. It's planted into our hearts. The reason we're saved is because God has caused us to be born again. And the apostle Peter said, through an incorruptible seed. Amen. Uh, that God planted in every one of our hearts, the seed of the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, and he told a parable and he said, the seed falls on different soil. And he said, some falls by the wayside. That's the hard path uh, outside the, the, the field that, that they wanted to grow in. And, and the devil comes, the birds come, he said, and they take it away immediately. And he said, the devil comes and robs it, takes it. And people don't even realize they, they lost it. They don't even know that, that it was there and gone. You know, how many people, you, we share the gospel with them and it's like, phew, right over their head. You know, and, and it makes no no sense to them, and it doesn't make an impact in their lives. Uh, probably all of us have received a witness, and we don't even remember it. You know, I, I you know my brother, my older brother, my sister got saved before I did, and uh, my brother swears that he that he preached the gospel to me. You know, and I'm like I I do not recall that at all. And it was because the seed fell on a hard heart. You know, and it was just taken away. And, you know, Jesus talked about that. He talked about the seed that follows, uh, falls among the, the stones. And that there's a shallow bit of soil there. And they respond to the gospel. And you ever wonder how come some people don't make it? You ever wonder that? You know, they get saved, come to an altar and pray. And you never see them again. Well, those are the, the, the shallow-rooted people 
that Jesus talked about. He said sometimes it falls among the, the, the rocks and they hear the word and they're glad and they want to be saved, but they have no root. They have no root, they're shallow. And as soon as the sun comes up, they die, they wither and die. And that's very much what happens to many people who, who don't allow the word of God to root in their soul. Their heart is not completely open yet. And, and so they believe, but they don't continue. Then he said, there's those that fall among the thorns. And he said, the thorns grow up and they choke the good seed and it doesn't bear fruit. It brings no fruit to, to fruition, uh, to uh, ripeness because they're so entangled and they can't grow. And he said, this is like the person who's, who's filled with the cares of this world. You know, the, 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 they're deceived by riches and, and the cares of this world, the worries of this world. But then he said, there's some that falls in good soil and the, that seed brings forth abundantly, 30 times, 60 times what was planted, 100 times what was planted. And so, so these are are uh, planted in, in hearts and lives. But I'm, what I want to talk to you about is the power of good seed, amen? Because there's something that takes place. You know, when Jesus was crucified and he died, we know he rose again. He had predicted this. He told his disciples on the third day, I'm going to rise, and he did. You know, it tells you something. Jesus is a prophet and Jesus is always right. Amen. He's always right. His death and resurrection would result in the salvation of multiplied thousands and even millions of people. See, that seed, his life has power that's real. Amen. It's power to save. It's power to, to deliver. Amen. The resurrection power of Christ is awesome. Amen. And what the what the seed does is it breaks open things. When Jesus rose from the dead, his tomb opened. You know, uh, I was just reading uh, about the, the women who were going to go anoint the body of Jesus. And they're walking over there and they're worried, how are we going to roll the stone away? Who's going to move the stone for us? And it says when they got there, it was already moved. Because... The power of the resurrection breaks things open. There's a, I read a story about a woman who was an atheist um, and she was a very rich woman and uh, she didn't believe in the resurrection. Actually, I think she did believe in the resurrection because uh, when, she was, uh, when she was dying, what she wanted on her, on her grave was a, a heavy duty grave with reinforced con. Uh, you know, concrete and and uh, a slab of concrete, uh, you know, put down with chains. And, and that's why I think, well, if you don't believe in it, why are you going through so much trouble? You know, and so the story goes that, that uh, they did what she wanted. And through the process of time, uh, a seed from a tree fell in a crack in her tomb. And as seeds do, it germinated. You ever drive down the road and you see a tree growing out of the side of a cliff? You know, it's like, you know? Well, the thing germinated and it grew and it kept growing until eventually it split her grave open. My grave's not going to open when Jesus comes back. It was in her mind. But I'll tell you what, he, he, he didn't need to come back to open her grave. He just planted a seed there. Seeds are powerful. Amen. And so one of the things that seeds do is they have what is put in them by God, reproductive power. Amen. God create, when God created the heavens and the earth and he created all the plants, the Bible says that he put seeds in them that would reproduce after their own kind. Let's, let me read you this, this scripture in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. It says, then God said, 
Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So God created every living thing to be able to reproduce. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know what kind of seeds don't reproduce today? Is, is uh, seeds that have been genetically modified. You know, they'll, they'll, that seed will grow, but then its seed won't grow. But Jesus is, a, is planted in the ground and his life, his death, his resurrection produces children of God. Amen. That's what he produces, children of God. That is why you and I are saved today. Amen. Amen. We are the result. We are the fruit of that resurrected life. So you might say, well, how can the death of one man 2,000 years ago impact my life? I'm telling you, this is how. Because when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you believe in him, that seed of God is planted into your heart. God. The Bible says we are born of God because God's seed is in us. Amen. It's like you got it's like you get a DNA transplant. Amen. Yeah. You know, we, we had uh, you know our our DNA was corrupted by sin. But God's DNA is incorrupt. You may listen to what John wrote. He who sins is of the devil. This is 1 John 3. And he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Amen. Before we were born again, we were the we were the children of the devil. And we sinned because that's that's what we did. But when we were born again, God put his nature in us. Amen. That's why a Christian can be different. That's why our lives can change. That's why we can be freed from sin because now God's seed is in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, you know, 2,000 years have gone by. And I want you to think about this. You and I are not the first Christians. The first Christians were those who believed in him at the beginning. And 2,000 years have passed since those first believers were born again. But the seed of God has been passed down from generation to generation. By the preaching of the gospel. Amen. When the gospel is preached, faith is born. Amen. Romans 10 says, it says that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. That's the power of the gospel. Amen. When we preach the gospel to somebody, we share the gospel with them. We give them a gospel tract. We pray with them. Anything that we do, what we're doing is we're planting the seed of God in their heart. Now, how that how that uh, uh, works out is is not up to us. Okay, our responsibility is to plant the seed. It's God who works in people. That's right. It's God who opens people's hearts. It's God who causes them to see that hey, you know what? I I I really think I need to give my life to Christ. I, I really believe that I need to get saved. And God God is able to convince people. Amen. He convinced me. I really didn't have anybody just, you know, telling me that I needed to get saved. I knew it, but nobody was right there in my face telling me. If God convinced me that I needed I needed Jesus. And God is able to do that with every person. As a matter of fact, what I believe is that every person who actually does get saved do so because they've been convinced. They realize, you know what? I need him. Hallelujah. And so 
God doesn't intend that the life of Jesus should end with us. Amen. He doesn't really doesn't intend for it to end with us. He wants us to also reproduce. Amen. You know, there's a saying uh, that I've heard many preachers say in reference to churches and, and people, you know, uh, and that is, you know, the Bible calls us sheep, right? We're sheep. We're God's sheep. He's the good shepherd and we're his sheep. We hear his voice. We follow him. And uh, the saying that, that many uh, preachers have said over the years is sheep beget sheep. Amen. In other words, people in the church are responsible for bringing others to Christ. We're not the end of the line. Amen. Um, in 1 John 3, 16, uh, it says this, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. That's why we're saying, right? By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. So, you know, because of what he did for us, we do that for others. You know, that's why we outreach. That's why we, you know, pray with people. That's why we visit. That's why we, you know, do many, you know, everything we do, uh, behind everything we do is this desire to see others get saved. Amen. And so, praise God. Uh, we're to be like Jesus. That's what the seed of Jesus does. When his seed is up in, in us, you know what he's doing? He's forming us. He's making us like him. You know, when you plant an orange, you know what you get? Not an apple. <laughs> you get an orange. Right? If you plant a, a you know, corn, you're going to get a corn stalk or a green bean or, or whatever it is, you know, squash. And so the seed of God is planted in us and what that produces is people like Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit makes us like Jesus. Amen. Loving, kind, merciful, forgiving. You know, all those wonderful things that He is, is what we're to be. Praise God. And so, I want to encourage you this morning because, you know, you might not think that, that you have much to offer and I just want to say to you that God doesn't need us to be perfect. What he needs is for us to be willing. Amen. Uh, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, Paul wrote, he said, For you see your calling, brethren, not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. And so he doesn't need perfect people. You know, if he needed perfect people, we might as well just go home. Because none of us measure up. And so I would encourage you that that. God put his seed in you. And when you share that, what God has done in your life, it makes a big difference. Maybe not everybody you talk to will listen or be ready to hear what you have to say. But if you pray for those that you share the gospel with, God has a way of convincing them. Amen. You know, our part, we can't save anybody. But what we can do is we can share the gospel with them, we can love them, and we can pray for them, and we can be a good example to them. Amen. Amen. Those are all things that are very necessary. And so the souls that God wants to save through your life will only be saved if you're willing to plant the seed in them. Amen. And so I want to encourage you, give your life to God. Let your life be planted in God's garden. That's his church. 
in this world. Uh, you know, he puts us in the world so that we can make a difference to people. We, you know, we're not, we don't spend our whole time in church. In fact, we, we spend a small uh, amount of our time in church. You know, if, if the service lasts an hour and you hear it three, three times a week, that's, you know, a little over three hours. But the rest of your time is in the world, among people. And God put his seed in you, and he wants us all to, to spread it. You know, we're, we're to be planters. Amen. Planting that seed, letting people know that God is good, letting them know that he has the power to change their lives. And I'm telling you, you know, the people, they don't understand. They look and they say, how can a man who died 2,000 years ago impact my life? Well, let me tell you how God put his seed, his life in that man, Jesus Christ, raised him from the dead, and he put that same life in us. If a seed could grow 4,000 years old and reproduce a harvest that's just a, a, a grain of wheat, I'm telling you, the, that's, that's something that God only can do, put life in that and bring fruit from it. And God will do that with us. And so let's be encouraged today, amen, to give ourselves to God and to understand I'm saved because somebody planted the seed in me and God doesn't want it to end with me. He wants it to, to be passed on to others so they also can make heaven their home, be saved and have the life of God in them. Amen. amen. Very simple message tonight. And I just want to encourage you, amen, to, to take it to heart, realize that what God has given you is precious. What God has given you is powerful. What God has given you can change lives just like it changed yours. Amen. So let's pray. Let's bow our heads together. Amen. Let's be encouraged to share this gospel with others. Amen. We're going to pray. And so as uh, right before we pray, I want to give you an invitation. Perhaps you've come to church tonight and you're not right with God. You know, you may have at one time Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but getting right with God means that you realize, you know what? I need my sins forgiven. I need to repent of my sin and receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Or if you're a backslide, backslider, you at one time were right with God, but you fell away today. Can God convince you that you need to rededicate your life to Him? And do it, just start again. You know, what a wonderful God we serve who is so patient with us. He's long suffering with us, the Bible says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's desire, that we would repent so he could forgive us. God doesn't want, he doesn't hate us. He doesn't hate you. You might think God hates you because of all the failure in your life. No, God doesn't hate you. God loves you. And God wants you to turn to him in faith and receive forgiveness and everlasting life. That's what God offers. So if you're, you've come tonight and you're not right with God, this evening you want to pray to receive Christ as your Savior. Rededicate yourself to God. If that's you, lift your hand. Um, I'd like to pray for you. And I will pray for you if you're willing. All I can do is deliver the message, plant the seed. But it's you who have, has to open your own heart. You have to do it. No one can do that for you. You have to decide. Say, you know what, Pastor? I need what God has. I need forgiveness. I need Him to help me. I need Him to set me free. If that's you, lift up your hand. We'll pray. God do a miracle in your life quickly. He's a miracle working God. <coughs> this evening, God's drawing you, He's dealing with you. Your back said you get right. Okay, then I'm going to change the order of our service and I want to open the altar tonight for prayer. You know, maybe you you've come and you know, sometimes we can feel like we don't measure up, and that's because Sometimes we don't, and sometimes we fail, even as Christians, and we need to you know, just bring 
our own life to an altar and say, you know what, God, I, I know. I know what you want me to do. And, you know, if you have failed, you're falling short. You know what? Just come and repent and ask God to forgive you and, and keep on going forward. You know, you're not a failure if you fall. You're only a failure if you don't get back up. Amen. And so we have an altar call every service so you can come and you can pray. Maybe you just need strength and you want to come find a place to pray for strength for God to help you. Maybe you need boldness to share the gospel with others. Come and ask him. He'll give it to you. And he desires that. So we're going to stand together. We're going to sing a song and worship the Lord. Amen. What, what do you want? Okay, thank you for the cross, Lord. Amen. Worthy is the Lord. Mike will bring that up for us. Amen. Let's all stand together as we sing this. Amen. If you need prayer, you come find a place to pray. God's going to help you. Thank you for the cross, Lord. of Jesus Christ and he's and he's given us a mending and that is he put that seed in us so that we can take it and we can bring forth others into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so let's not forget that that really is the mandate of the church. That's what we're all about and we don't want to lose sight of that. Amen. So praise God. We're going to dismiss tonight. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Remember Sunday we'll be back for our Sunday services. Uh, Sunday morning and then Sunday night and also I wanted to, to let you know Sunday morning uh, I want to preach a message on on God's prescription for mental health amen how many know God cares about our, our mind and our thinking amen. Amen. amen and so I just want to encourage you man you come Sunday and we're going to believe God praise God okay so let's pray George would guess God's blessing oh Lord I thank you God that we come here today God and Hear your word, God. I pray that you would bless each one of us, Lord. I pray that you would touch the sick that we have brought in front of your throne, that you would heal them, God, and draw them and draw the backsliders back, God. And I thank you for all that you do, and I pray that you be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'd just like to make an announcement. Um, it's Pastor Andrew and Edna's anniversary, and we want to appreciate them. And 
tell them how much we love them. And we're even going to feed you tonight. Without you even knowing. Happy anniversary. Thank you. 37 years tomorrow. 37 years. Yeah. 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 Yeah.